Hi there fellow guitarists, my name is Josh Rogers and welcome to one of the most interesting videos that I think I've done on the channel to date. In this video I'm going to be actually like having a masterclass with one of my favourite guitarists at the moment, his name's Andreas Devitis, and I was able to get this lesson from a website called Tonebase. Uh, I had to, to pay for it of course, it's not free, uh, but what I was able to do was choose the artist that I wanted to learn with and then I submitted this piece, which is actually me playing Capriccio Rub. And uh, that, that performance of me playing Capriccio Rub is actually on the channel. I uploaded it a few weeks ago. And I was able to get permission to share the lesson with you guys. This is going to be a video of me reacting to the lesson. So we'll be watching it together, all of us. And you'll see me up in the corner. And he'll say something and then I'm going to sort of show you me going through it. I've never made this type of video before so I hope it's going to work out and uh, there's more information down in the description if you want to find out how that you can get a lesson. The the tone base lesson system is kind of probably more for advanced players. They don't actually teach you like I teach you. you know, on this channel I teach you every single note and how I play it but that level on that website is for more advanced guitarists that that don't need help with that. It's more about interpretation, how to find melodies, more on technique and a, and a general overall approach to music rather than going through something note by note. Anyway, let's kick this off and as you know, let your fingers fly. Hello Josh, thank you for choosing me for this interactive uh, lesson with Tom Bays. Um, so let's start with Capriccio Arabe by Francisco Tarrega. Um, I will start playing uh, with you. I listened to your performance, uh, I enjoyed it, and I have some tips for you, some little advices to be more clear and also closer to the uh, interpretation of uh, Francisco Tarrega. Um, so, uh, let's start. just um, play clearer this rhythm because it's uh, written uh, in a rhythmical way it's not so we are we are uh, at the end of a phrase of course but still we have to understand this rhythm so if you want to do the arpeggio it should be a little bit faster so that so that we can feel this rhythm tam ti tam it should be a little bit more fast and connected between this and this mi do okay all right so let's just have a a look at what he he said to me there for those of you that have seen me play it i play it like this I tend to spread that out and the rhythm there is a dotted quaver followed by a semi quaver. So what Andreas is saying is that I should not pause so long or take so long to play this arpeggio, so it's more like this, rather than what I do which is I sort of pause a little bit after that semi quaver on the E. And I'm sort of maybe arpeggiating this a bit too slowly, so. like that. First, and then you have the solo. So here we have to imagine that this is a cello solo, so a big sound, apoyando of the thumb as you as you play, but with a crescendo towards the high notes. So, all right, let's. Let's have a look at that too. So I play this like this. That's how I play it. Uh, but as you can see, I think Andreas is playing it like this. And there he's doing portamentos, which is sliding from one note. Like that. 
And he's also mentioning, which I thought was really cool, that you should try to make it sound like a cello, or imagine that it's a cello playing. Da, 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 da. And also, he mentioned crescendo right at the end there. But a crescendo means get louder. One of the ways you can do that without getting super loud is to actually start quite soft. When I think about my performance in hindsight, I probably should have started this a bit a bit more quietly, like maybe pianissimo, and built it up to uh, forte or even louder, fortissimo. Also he did mention apoyando, which I did in the video, and that's a rest stroke with the thumb. So not like this. Like this. So your thumb actually comes to rest on the string below, and that gives you a lot of power and control. little portamentos more uh, evident. Um, this portamento with the fourth and then with the third. So there he's mentioning which fingers. That portamento there slide. So he's just saying make that a little more obvious. there that's some solid professional virtuosic advice start soft crescendo use the portamentos and imagine that it's kind of sounding like a cello feel very loud so start not very loud and then crescendo with vibrato like cello really you have to uh, to feel like a cello player then so here is not very easy because you have a big accelerando um, and this part is the faster uh, is the fastest part so we have to play really uh, clear listening all the notes and a little bit faster so how uh, can we practice this we have, of course, to start practicing very slow and legato, so... And um, so you have to listen that the sounds are all legatos and connected, each one to the other one, and also that your right hand fingers are not repeating uh, many times so you have always to to change the the finger when you play the scale so that you can do it faster and clear without repeating the same finger i mean so i would start for example with a then legato slur mi re so mi re okay let's just have a look at that so what he's saying is make sure you alternate your fingers just like you're walking not to use one finger consecutively a rest stroke from E to D and pull off yeah. if you notice the way I play it I don't do that I've got a different fingering entirely I do it like this but here so it's pull off rest stroke with the A if you don't know what A is that's your ring uh, ring finger let's carry on it's slur then M I M I going so starting with A, slur, then M, I, M, I, and then the portamento is... Okay, so Sid, do a pull off with A, that's from the second fret to the open, and then M, I, M, on the A string, from C sharp to the B flat to A, A, M, I, M, then I, M. Just up to the portamento. Starting from the one, B, C. 
so this portamento is not starting from another note but it's starting from E going to B. Here I made a, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't say it's a mistake, but what I was doing was I was sort of doing a hammer on to the F and sliding like this. This is what I was doing. It's very subtle, but I was doing this. I was putting my second finger on here and sliding up to the B flat. But Andreas is saying from here, start your portamento, but eventually, sort of in, in this area here, put your second finger on, like this. Yeah. Okay, and, and this he's is slow, again, actually. Uh, paying really attention to the right hand fingers and the legato of the uh, left hand. And then we have to say that to be faster, we can practice this with um, strange rhythms. For example, the swing rhythm. Okay, there. This is a really classic way of improving your fluidity in a scale. Which is this is a scale. It's uh, it's in the context of a of a song, of course, or of a piece. But it is just running down the harmonic minor scale, D harmonic minor. So what he's saying is, which is a swing rhythm. And that can actually help you if you're struggling to make your uh, playing of scale passages fluid and smooth and, as he said, legato. So that we are going a little bit faster with our fingers. And then, for example, always uh, repeat, uh, avoiding to repeat uh, the fingers. They're yeah, slightly different rhythm. Like that. And as he said, always avoiding repetition. So don't use I, I, M, M. Saying I am, I am, or whatever it happens to be, but don't use the same finger twice in a row. Of the right hand, always changing fingers. And then another rhythm. So the first note is longer. Okay, let's just try that. So he's saying linger on the first note and then rush the rest. just practice fast so uh, to be really fast and clear we always have to study step by step before slow and legato then for example the swing rhythm so one note long and one note short and then other kind of rhythms uh, always faster for example one was one long, one note long and three notes short. Okay, so that one. Like that. So that it's always more difficult and more fast. Okay, so uh, when you practice this part of the scale like this, you have to try to make a big accelerando from here. And this is not easy, but always this part you could practice like this. And so after this, um, it should be easier. Okay, then let's start with the theme. This part is still accompaniment, but we really have to listen this. So it's very important the thumb here. So really, we will listen the cello. 
Ooh. So what uh, he's saying is that this is kind of setting up for the introduction, but there is a kind of melody you could say. And he's singing it there. So just making sure you bring out that. make it sound like a cello as he's mentioned previously. Now we're moving into the melody. And then the violin. Okay, here we have to be really careful because a lot of people plays this part like this. Like this, it seems that the melody is la fa la fa la fa, while the melody is just la. So we don't have to listen so loud the the second string here. So pay attention to play louder the first string the uh, A. very very soft the second and fourth so it's not important this accompaniment another brilliant piece of advice which totally went past me actually I always thought the melody was but as you can hear and when you sort of analyze it a bit more closely, I think he's right on the money. So, I was playing it like this. But what I actually have to do is what he was saying, which is just emphasize that note there, the A. I was doing. But it does sound totally different if you. Alright, awesome point. If you if you get nothing else out of this lesson, you should get that out of this lesson. Okay, so for and for example to play these in a very natural way, also according to Tarrega guitar school it should be nice to play the first string the first note here always with apoyando of the right hand so always with this kind of rest stroke so that the finger does not go like this inside of the hand but it goes on the other string while the other two notes for example with M, I, non apoyando, so without uh, rest stroke but with free stroke, so that uh, using these two kind of strokes we have a difference of the sound, so it's not, so it's not the same level but okay, uh, so this is very very important. Right, another great point there, which I didn't know either. I didn't know that Trega was uh, really into his restrokes. I probably should have, but that's the point of taking lessons. You are always exposed, or hopefully you're always exposed, to someone that has a higher amount or more knowledge than you do on a given subject. And in this case, I did not know that Trega used restrokes a lot. Uh, I was using restrokes in this actually, uh, but Let's just reiterate what Andres was saying. The A, that fifth fret there, is done with a rest stroke. And the in between notes, or the accompanying notes, the F on the sixth fret of the B and the D string seventh fret, which is an A note, are played tirando or free stroke. Like that. And he's saying that that provides a variation in tone. So it's not just a volume thing, it's a tonal thing as well. Restroke, free stroke. 
Grace.